Hello everyone and welcome to another one-off Football Manager Rebuild here on the channel. Today, as you can see, we are rebuilding none other than Rangers Football Club. One of the more dominant forces in the Scottish divisions, we're hoping not only to make them the best team in Scotland, but also to perform well on the European front consistently. We've got five seasons in this video to rebuild the squad using only transfers and then simulating the season to see how we're getting on. And there is a lot of history to live up to at Rangers. Before we take a look around the club though, if you do enjoy this video, please smash the like button for me to get these videos out to as many people as possible. Drop a comment down below of who you'd like to see in the next rebuild and hit that subscribe button as well for more content similar to this one. We've got plenty of one-off rebuilds coming and for those people who are interested in the more long-term series, we're looking to start one up again in the new year. So don't worry about that. But for now, we have got Rangers Rangers to manage. Now the reason I've chosen Rangers to rebuild is one, I've never done a rebuild in Scotland before, but two, this season they've fallen behind their rival Celtic in the title race, they've had to sack their manager and things aren't looking massively massively positive although it shouldn't be too difficult for them to turn it around because they are a club of course with a lot of history but in this save not only do we want to overthrow Celtic as mentioned we want to make this squad a European force so there's plenty of work to be done you can see they've won plenty of Scottish Premiership titles they've won a European Cup Winners Cup they were also runners up in the Europa League on two occasions they've got good facilities all around but the media as is in real life predict them to come second in place of Celtic. Of course, they've been the dominant force in Scottish football over the last decade or so. If you go into the season preview, you can see Celtic's attack is much better than ours, but it seems that the game favours our defence a little bit more. But how is our squad? Is it actually any good? Well, of course, relative to the Scottish division, we clearly have one of the best squads in terms of ability. Our best player is Malik Tillman on loan for Bayern Munich. Alfredo Morelos is, of course, a massive player for Rangers. And then we've got Hagi, Yilmaz, Goldson, Kent, Kamara and James Tavernier as some of our other better options and in terms of potential it's Yilmaz who has the most, Tillman with the second most and Welshman Rabi Matondo with the third most potential according to our coaches at least at the club. Now the club in terms of an age structure is in the middle. I wouldn't say it's too old. I also wouldn't say the squad is too young either. There's plenty of middle-aged players. This is fine. There's just a few key players who are clearly aging, including the goalkeeper. But it seems in this first transfer window, we're not going to be able to do all that much because there's only £800,000 in the transfer budget and nothing in the wage budget. So clearly Rangers have done all the business this summer already but in terms of finances we're not in a terrible place 10 million pounds in the overall balance nothing really in the debts and loans nothing of major note at least so there shouldn't be too much holding us back in this rebuild we've also got two good young players in the dev center that i'm looking to use alex lowry and leon king and tactically i'm thinking of lining up at least at first with a 4-3-3 tactic i might change this as time goes on but i want to slowly improve the quality of this squad if we're looking at our best 11 currently it would be Alan McGregor in goal, Tavernier Goldson, Ben Davis and Ridvan Yilmaz as our defence, Glenn Kamara, Stephen Davis and Ryan Jack as the midfield, with Ryan Ken, Ian Haji, and Alfredo Morelos as our forward line. Before we move on to our first set of transfers, let's take a look at the club vision where they're wanting us to sign players under the age of 23 for the first team, work within our wage budget, grow the reputation and a load of stuff about contracts. But realistically this year, they want us to reach the Champions League proper and qualify for the Champions League again this season, as well as winning the Scottish Cup and the League Cup. They're all desired. To anyone who wonders why I have the editor on, I set it so that I can't be sacked during the simulation, so we won't have to fear about that. But hopefully in our five seasons, we can rebuild this club. But first of all, let's see if we can do anything in this first transfer window. And as it turns out, I've had a look around and there's not too much that I want to do to change anything. All I've done is promoted those young players that we mentioned to the first team. So as a start, let's see how that team gets on in season one, and then we'll be able to make some real signings from that point. And it's not been a bad season at all for Rangers fans. Just so you know, I don't have a horse in the race of Rangers versus Celtic. I can't say I've ever looked really deep into the history of Scottish football, and I'm sure I'll do a Celtic rebuild at some point as well. So just to clear that up, I know there is a bit of a political debate between the two. But yes, we have won the league by four points over Celtic. We got a few more draws in them, but it was their losses that really held them back, two of which 
were against us. It says four games lost, but it's only showing three there, which is slightly strange, but we smashed them in the goal difference. And even though it was close and we're clearly the two best teams, we have managed to finish out on top, which is awesome. Already we're seeing there that Alfredo Morelos was a huge part of our season this year. Let's take a look how he performed in other competitions. So he lost the cup, the Premier Sports Cup, to Celtic. We got knocked out by Celtic in the Scottish Cup, but then we managed to take the league, so I guess it's a bit of swings and roundabouts. But I'm sure Rangers fans won't have been happy with that. And in terms of the Champions League, if we go to the group stage, we were apparently eliminated there. If we do scroll down, we were in a group with Benfica, Leipzig and Real Madrid, where even though we picked up six points, two wins, one at home against Leipzig and one against Benfica, it was nowhere near enough. We didn't finish in third place, so there was no Europa League either. I don't know if we actually had to go through the qualifying round. We did, where we beat PSV Eindhoven 6-2. So clearly the better team there made it into the Champions League, but it wasn't to be for us. But we have got a little bit of money to spend now. Seven and a half million pounds, 80,000 in the wage budget. We're letting some of the more important older players whose contracts are expiring leave the club. I've got different plans in mind. You'll see Ryan Jack, Stephen Davis, Scott Arfield, Philip Hollander as well. All of those players are moving on to New Horizons now and it will be our job to try and replace them. Sorry if any of your favourite players get sold in this rebuild, but it's our job now to try and make this squad a more competitive team on a European front and also keep that dominance over Celtic at the top of the league. And it's been a busy old summer at Rangers. The first player to leave was Kimar Roof, a former Leeds player who went to Anderlecht, then moved on to Rangers. Didn't play too much for his last year, so I've decided to let him go to Hearts for two 2.5 million pounds. Another one of our forwards has also moved to Hearts. It's Scott Wright, a wide player, 25 years of age, was good, but I didn't really think had a massive future at the club, so we've let him move on too. It was about 500,000 pounds for the player that I mentioned previously, but for Antonio Kolak, who's gone to Aris in the Greek divisions, we've managed to pull in 3.5 million pounds. Rangers signed him recently for 2.1. He's then played 14 games, played pretty well as our backup striker, wanted a new contract, a better deal. I decided it wasn't worth it. He's fairly old too at 29. So again, another one that I've decided to let move on to opt for a different kind of player. And the final sale of note was a bit of a weird one that I did not expect. Archie Stevens, a player in our under 18s, I think it was, who hadn't even shown up as a player with a lot of potential, at least according to our coaches, um, had a bid come in from Manchester City for near enough 10 million pounds. It started off about six. Because they were so eager, I kept raising it. And we've done very well here. Rangers signed him from Wimbledon. He played one time for the Rangers B team last season. Didn't play very well. Clearly Man City have seen something in him. And whilst he might have a lot of potential... I can't ignore 10 million pounds in our first transfer window here. I've had to take it and I've used it to reinvest in our first team squad massively. Now, I think we've had an incredible summer of business and really elevated our team. Our first player that we bought in was a new backup striker with a lot more potential than Kolak. It is the 21-year-old Croatian Dion Drenner Beljo, who our scouts were raving about. I know he's meant to be good in FM, a six foot five beast physically dominant, a good finisher, good mental attributes too, coming off a great season in the Croatian divisions for Ojzjek. Apologies if I've butchered that pronunciation, but I'm hoping he will now be our backup striker for Morelos, and when the time comes, he can overtake that position. Only £5.25 million for him is a great deal, and I'm sure he'll be leading those forwards a few years down the line. Another bargain was a Norwegian central midfielder, Elias Hagen, who since joining seems to be developing very nicely. Clearly moving to a new league has helped him, but he is one of our better players by far a phenomenal central midfield option. Had a good season out at Bodo Glimp last time out. We've signed him for £2.8 million and I think that is a bargain deal for a player who is now considered a star at Rangers and worth anywhere under £20 million. Great attributes, look like they're going to get even better. Very happy with this one. We didn't stop there though. We've signed plenty more talent that I'm hoping will grow with us as the club gets better. I was looking for some of the best wonder kids that our scouts are recommending and they came up with Enzo Boyomo, who I've seen a few times on a few different rebuilds come up in scout reports. I always think he's just below the levels of the leagues I'm managing in and no offence to the Scottish leagues, but I think Boyomo comes in as a very good player here. 21 years of age, five appearances 
for the Cameroon national team, a well-rounded centre-back who, despite being 5'11", looks like he should be a good player for us and a very nice ball-playing defender. It cost us 5.5 million to sign him from Albacete in the Spanish second division, where he was great last year, but there's still five or six more signings to cover. Nathan Baxter, a Chelsea player who was released on a free, comes in now as our first choice goalkeeper, 24 years of age. McGregor left the club, we needed a new keeper. Baxter was available on a free. Championship experience last time out with Hull, where he seemed to do fairly well, came through the Chelsea Academy. It's usually a good sign, so we'll be hoping he can be a regular in the net for us. A deal I can't believe we were able to get done was Max Ahrens of Norwich, who I always try and sign a few years in for 30, 40 million, and Norwich never have anything to do with it. However, here, he was available as a free agent. His contract was beginning to expire. We were able to approach him with a new deal, and despite a very good year last time out with Norwich, and I'm sure they were going up to the Premier League, they did. He decided not to stick around. He's decided to come to Rangers, and that's the right back position sorted for years to come now. To get those two on a free was great, but now we've added some South American spice to the midfield with Fabrizio Diaz coming in, a Uruguayan 20-year-old. He'll start off as a good backup option to Glenn Kamara in that deep line playmaker role and hopefully keep growing to the point where he can surpass him and become his own player there. So I'm not really trying to overthrow many of the mainstays in the first team already, just bring through some players that can be our next crop in a year or two when they begin to grow. Two 2.5 million pounds is a bargain from Liverpool FC. I can't say I've ever came across this guy before. I don't know if he's going to be good going forward, but you know what? I thought he looked like a good deal and we've gone for him. And our final signing was Martin Bacharina, a Croatian 20-year-old central midfielder who can also play further forward and is very versatile. I think we've got a bargain here, despite spending a pretty pricely sum of 8 million. It was kind of the case that I wasn't looking to sign anyone else. And then we sold that young player for 9.5 million to City. We had a bit more money to spend. I thought Bacharina looked like the perfect player, not only to help our team right now, but to grow and either sell on for a profit in the future, or if we can become a Champions League regular knockout team, maybe then he can stick around and be a big part of what we're trying to build. But I think we've got a great deal with him. Overall, it's been a very good summer. You can see the finances are kind of balancing out here. And then if you go to last season, again, not a massive difference. So we spent the budget we were given. We've managed to make the team a lot better in my eyes. And now if we pick the best 11 without restriction, it's Nathan Baxter with Max Ahrens at right back. So two of our new signings there. Connor Goldson, Ben Davis, Ridvad Dilmaz, Glenn Kamara, Bacharina, and Elias Hagen with Sakala, Ryan Kent and Morelos as the forward line. I think that's a much better team now. We've lowered the age a little bit as well. So hopefully this team can not only retain that title in the Scottish League, but maybe pick up a cup or two and see if we can get into the knockout rounds of the Champions League. It'll be a lot to ask for, but who knows how we'll do in season two. And actually, it's not gone the way that we planned. We've managed to lose the title this time to Celtic, who actually had more losses than us, but we drew seven games, which is really annoying. And it now means the title has now gone back to them, a pretty significant points margin as well of 11 points. We still qualify for the Champions League, but it's a bit of a flip of last year. We've managed to win both cup competitions, the Scottish Cup and the Premier Sports Cup. It's another group stage knockout though in the Champions League. If we go to that. I think we auto qualified this year, but we finished bottom of our group yet again. Five points this time. Betis got six, Liverpool with 10, and Roma with 13. So we were nowhere near qualifying, really. Uh, very unfortunate. Has not been a good year for us in that sense, but at least we've added a little bit more silverware to the cabinet. And we've also had some good performances across the team, which is nice to see. We can see some players developing. Let's have a look who played the best. It was Morelos and Kent as our two best players. Connor Goldson, Haji, all players that were here before we took over. But it's nice to see Hagen, Diaz, Ahrens and Bacharina coming into their own at the club. Beljo, despite only starting seven times, has scored 16 goals, including 23 substitute appearances. Boyomo played here and there and played pretty well, as did Tavernier, Lowry, Kamara. Basically, we're always going to play well in the Scottish League. We're better than most of the teams. It just seems like in those key games, we weren't able to get the job done and we didn't manage to beat Celtic 
in the league, which did, of course, affect our chances of winning the title. But it's good to see that our young players are doing well. That, I mean, their transfer values might be inflated and they can start becoming regular first team members of our squad if we don't sell them on. So let's see what we can do in season three to try and take this team to another level and hopefully take that title back off of Celtic. Season three opened up with us selling on a player who just hadn't featured much for us at all. Tom Lawrence has left the club after only a few appearances having joined from championship side Derby on a free. He's now moved to Hibs for £170,000. And that was it really on the sales front. Everything else was incomings. The first one was Christian Bayek, a player coming from Derby this time on a free. So we had Tom Lawrence a few seasons ago. Now we've got Bayek. I've bought him in just to add a bit of depth. I saw he was available as a free agent and the scouts were really positively talking about him. So I thought, he could be a good squad player, very consistent too, and hopefully the Polish international can become a regular in that deep line playmaker role when we need him to. We did carry on with the free signings though, this time allowing Ismaili Saar to join the club. Again, I think this is phenomenal business. A player who was smashing up the championship, much like Max Ahrens was, available on an approach to sign deal, and we just happened to get there first again. Saar has came over to our Rangers side, and I'm sure he can grow as the club grows. I always think of him as younger than he is. He's 26 here, but I really do think the Senegalese wide player can be a top draw signing for us. And we needed some depth in the left back spot. So we have gone for Alberto Moreno. Nearly didn't sign him because of that moustache, but we decided to keep it going anyway. He's currently recovering from a broken leg, but we're just looking for someone to back up Yilmaz in that left back spot when needed. I think we only got him on a one-year deal, maybe a two-year deal. I can't remember now. Um, but either way, not a long-term option, just someone available on a free to give us some cover. But I did feel like Nathan Baxter underperformed a little bit last year and maybe isn't the ideal choice for that number one spot for the rest of this simulation. So I've decided to go for someone a little bit better. I say a little bit, a lot better in terms of current ability. It is, and I apologize if I butcher this, Nedeljko Labrovic, who is a Croatian goalkeeper who has been signed from Raisha out in the Croatian divisions where he's done very well. Now I know all those pronunciations were wrong, but he is gonna be a great signing for us, I hope. A very good goalkeeping option and comes in as our best goalkeeper, as you can see there. And overall, was not a crazy summer. We didn't sign too many players. We didn't let too many major players go either. We kind of just tried to be careful with our business. We only had a little bit of transfer budget left anyway, so it's not like there's much more we could have done. Um, just to keep you updated as well, the facilities, we've been improving over time, which is nice to see, and they're slowly getting better and better. But our best 11 now, when we take a look at it, it's Labrovic in goal with Aarons, Goldson, and Boyomo making his way into our best 11. Yilmaz, Diaz, Hagen, Bacharina, Kent, Saar, and Morelos. So slowly, some of these new signings are beginning to make their mark at the club and become key players for us, which is great because they're younger than most of the other players we're using. And we'll be hoping that these guys can take us a little bit further this year. We're still only predicted to come second in the league. And if we actually go to the season preview, I haven't checked to see whether our squad is now considered better than Celtics. Labrovic is supposedly coming in as the best player in the division, and it also says we're predicted to come first here, so I don't really know how this is working, but Aaron's is the best right back, Kent Morelos, Bacharina, a few of our players getting in this best 11 here, and hopefully that will mean in season three we can reclaim the title, hopefully win some cups too, and see if we can just for once make a knockout stage of the Champions League. And it's been a bit of a mixed bag this year in season three. We've only got two seasons to go after this, but we have managed to win the Scottish League title again, which is obviously good news. We beat them by four points overall and the title is back in our hands. However, the disappointing thing will be one, we got knocked out in the second round of one of the cups. We did win the other one, but we didn't even make it to the Champions League group stage. We failed in the qualification rounds. We ended up going to the Europa League and reaching the quarterfinals where we lost to Mönchengladbach. Now, a Europa League win would still be fantastic, but getting knocked out in the quarters is a little bit annoying, but there's been a very big development this year in our side. Firstly though, just to let you know, we've got £6.65 million in the budget for next summer. And you'll also see Glenn Kamara refused to sign a new deal, hasn't been playing as much recently, so he's going to Shakhtar. But the one I want to show you, if we go to the tactics screen, you will see the best player this year was Beljo, who over the course of the season must have started to be considered a better striker than Morelos. So the game started to use him while we were simulating. 
and this man tore it up. The 23-year-old is now wanted by Man United, Tottenham, by Munich and Barcelona. If we have a look at his goal scoring record, you will see why. 39 goals in only 36 league appearances with a 7.81 average match rating at the age of 23 and developing very well too. We'll have a big fight on our hands trying to keep him at our side this summer. But if we do sell him, we'll make a lot of money. But I want to be keeping him around because I really do think he's a step up from Morelos. And if we can keep developing him into the striker, I know he can potentially be We'll be looking at a gold mine here of a player who will eventually fetch us 50, 60 million if we play our cards right. So I think we've done very well there. Good to see some of our other new players are making their mark on the team. The board in general seem to be very happy with us. So now let's move on to season four transfers. If you are enjoying the video, don't forget to smash the like button for me. Subscribe for more content like this. And now let's simulate ahead and see how we get on. So to pick up some funds at the start of season four, we've decided to let... Rabi Matondo go. He was originally one of our better young players. However, he hasn't played as much last season, has never really performed at the level some of his colleagues were, so we've let him go to Basel for £6 million. And sadly, we've also let Alfredo Morelos go. He's left to join Nice. I know that a lot of people would have wanted him to stick around, but he was kicking up some fuss. Um, he only played 12 times last year because of Beljo's improvement, and he just wasn't really with it anymore. He was asking to leave. He was affecting the club dynamics because he was such an important player and from there we just decided it was right to let him go he's gone to Nice for 30 million pounds so we still get a good bit of value out of him for a 29 year old player hopefully he'll be successful there but it's time for him to go and for Beljo to take up that mantle as our starting striker he hasn't joined just yet but I have managed to agree a deal for Andrea Bellotti to come to our club he has been signed on an approach to sign deal as well he knows he's coming in as a backup player though which is good that means hopefully there'll be less pressure to play him but if we're talking about a backup striker in the Scottish divisions to be Andrea Bellotti at 31 years of age that is a great bit of business and someone that I think will elevate not just our club but the whole division this guy is a beast and a phenomenal striker to have especially when it says a backup I felt like we needed some more midfield depth so we went in for Nicola Fagioli a player who was on the transfer list and whilst I don't think he's amazing the 24 year old was transfer listed for a very good price of 3.7 million pounds the scouts gave him an A plus because of that value saying he's so cheap you need to get him um, and I think he'll be a good player for us able to play a variety of roles very well rounded and someone that I think will walk in to our side in those rotation matches when it's a cup game and will hopefully just add to the depth of this squad which you need if you want to compete in Europe. Benoit Badashile comes in as our new centre back sometimes in FM he ends up playing for Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich sometimes he gets stuck at Monaco for a bit which is what's happened here he was available for 11 million pounds a great deal for a centre back who is on another level compared to some of the players that we do have left footed as well which is going to help in terms of having a ball player on the left if we need it and um, a very physically dominant centre back and someone that is more than good enough for this division and hopefully of a European quality also and finally we spent 6.5 million pounds on Isaac Bergman Johansson the Icelandic midfielder slash wide player which is where I actually think we might use him as an inverted winger on that right hand side 22 years of age lots of experience for Iceland already with 33 appearances very well rounded physically a good technically driven player whose mentals are far beyond his years some good play for Copenhagen also some poor games here and there particularly last season but I do think he is an upgrade on what we had and I think he'll up level this team yet again and now our squad is at an even higher level than it was before and that's what we want to keep doing of course just building this squad up to be better and better to keep dominating the Scottish League and also hopefully making our mark in Europe and our squad is pretty much all now developed by us as the manager. Labrovic, Aarons, Boyomo, Badashile, Yilmaz of course is here from the start. Diaz, Bacharina, Hagen, Ryan Kent is still playing, Ismaili Saar and Beljo up top with plenty 
of good players on the bench. We got a lot of our business done early this time round, but Kamara is on his way out soon to join Shakhtar, as mentioned. But I'm very happy with this, and hopefully we can kick on in Season 4, because after that, we've only got one season to make our mark as Rangers boss. Again, we've done very well in the league, managing to grow our points total between us and Celtic a lot further, but also look at the difference in the goal difference. That is very, very nice to see. And it's Beljo who has got us there with a 7.92 average match rating in the league and 41 goals. Saar has been great, as is Badashile, but Saar and Kent have been feeding in the balls to Beljo. That sounds weird, but not what I meant. But anyway, um, Saar's got 16 assists, Kent's got 25. They are plating up chances for our man Beljo, who has done very very well and far better than I would have expected him to also. He's now wanted by massive clubs like Bayern Munich, Real Madrid and Liverpool. It's going to be even harder to keep him now. He's asked me to set a price tag on him of £43.5 million. Otherwise, he would have been upset. So we've got that as his value. I think he's worth it. I think clubs will come in for him. But if we can do anything to keep hold of him, I will do exactly that. But finally, we've managed to make it out of the group stages. We've won the Premier Sports Cup and we're runners up in the Scottish Cup to Celtic, who we've lost to for the first time in a little while in a final. But in the Champions League, we did get out of the groups, which is great. Let's take a look at that. I say the groups, but it's not like that anymore, is it? We were actually in the league phase, as they call it, because the Champions League format switches in this year. We managed to get 13 points out of eight games, which meant that we qualified for the knockoff playoff round. We would have had to play that, right? We did, where we knocked out Porto 7-5 on aggregate with a 4-2 away win, which is great to see. Then in the round of 16, we got put up against Roma, where we were good away from home, winning 2-0, but then they came over to the Ibrox and we lost 4-0, which is not ideal and wouldn't have been a nice day for any Rangers fan, but at least we've managed to do okay there. Round of 16 will mean some money would have came into the club, and you can see it there. £21 million to spend. You'll also see Moreno, Tavernier, Sutar, and Baxter are on the way out. Tavernier, of course, a great servant of Rangers, but his time is up. He's 34 years of age, asking to leave, and slowly playing less and less with the emergence of Max Ahrens. He will go, and we've got a lot of money now to try and take this team one step further and hopefully get into, say, a quarterfinal of a Champions League, which would be a great end to this rebuild. And a transfer I was not expecting in Season 5 was for our star goalkeeper, Labrovic, to leave the club. But Manchester United, I say came in for him, but we actually offered him out. And you'll see why. But Man U did then come in for him and have signed him to be their backup goalkeeper. So good for him. £40 million after two good seasons for us. I think now that we're in the Champions League proper rounds, we're starting to get some inflated values for some of our players, which will help massively. But he has now left the club to go play at Manchester United. So fair play to him. Good luck to him there. And Connor Goldson has also left the club to go join Fulham. He decided it was time to move on because he's achieved everything that he can here at Rangers. And fair enough to him. Playing constantly for us last season, a little bit less. He's now 33. A million pounds to Fulham whatever he wants to do he's earned the right to go and do that so bye bye Connor Goldson but we needed some new players to come in and the first one was a new centre-back we have gone for Strahinja Pavlovic a Serbian centre-back a monster centre-back at six foot four dominant physically as well partner him up with Badashile and you have got an ultimate physical defensive partnership three and a half star current ability player better than Enzo Boyomo so I'm really happy to bring him in we then got very very lucky here because we've managed to sign what is one of the best wonder kid goalkeepers I've ever seen in FM. I think we've got very lucky with this guy. His name is Kim Christensen Hoyenhall, who already has 13 appearances for Norway at the age of 18. Definitely considered a wonder kid, as you can see there. One of the best young goalkeepers around for sure. He's been playing at a World Cup for Norway already at such a young age. Great determination, great physicals, everything is good about this guy. And we managed to pick him up for about £5 million from Bodo. I'm not sure how no one else had already poached him, but I've compared him to our previous goalkeeper and he's actually better than him at the age of 18, which is crazy. Six foot four as well. He is our new starting keeper. And then for the first time, we had some money left over and I didn't really know where to improve the squad. So we were able to make a luxury sign-in. I took a look at who the scouts were recommending and Ivan Illich, another Serbian, 
was the person recommended. Three star player, 20 million pound valuation, good amongst many different midfield areas, good passing, technique, vision, very good physically as well, and someone that I think really improves our midfield. Joining from Hellas Verona in the first division in Italy, very, very happy with that signing, and that is now officially our transfer business done for the rest of this simulation. So let me now pick the best squad that we've got, and we'll have one season now simulating with this team. Supposedly, it's Hoy and Hall in goal, Max Ahrens, Boyomo, Badashili, and Yilmaz as our defence. Not a bad defence at all. Diaz, Hagen, Johansson, Baturina, Saar, and Beljo. Baturina, by the way, we've been battling to keep him in the team because he's had some massive bids from Arsenal of like 30, 40 million pounds. Again, he wanted to go, so I said to him, okay, if we get a bid of 58, you can go, and we're waiting to see if that happens, but I'm hoping we've put them off because it's been a few days since their last bid. So we'll see how this team gets on. Like I say, I'm hoping to again reach the knockout stages of the Champions League, maybe even a quarterfinal, but we've managed to build a very good young squad here. The average age of the squad is definitely down from before. Some players that must come in now as the best players in the league for sure. And if we're looking at club vision, we've surpassed everything there. Uh, all the facilities are in a great place as well. Just the youth facilities need a bit of work. And financially, we haven't even ruined the club. We've got a balance. We've barely got any transfer debt. This has been one of my most successful rebuilds so far, but it will all depend on how we do in this final season. So let's take a look and see how we do. Okay, so just to guide you through what happens when I land on these simulation pages, I usually just go to um, competition screen and then I have to click into the Scottish League to find out exactly how we finish but it's already here on the home screen 100 points and the reason I'm saying this is because I clicked in to competitions to show you the Scottish League in full detail to see that we've been runners up in the Champions League which seems crazy very very unfortunate that we were so close and didn't win it I'll have a look at if who we played what the score was in a second but just to note we did win the Scottish Cup and it's been a great year for us. It looks like Beljo has had a phenomenal season. But let's check out the Champions League, shall we? We lost in the final to Arsenal. That feels like a winnable final. They've won two Champions Leagues in a row now. I say winnable. Obviously, they'd be expected to be better than our Rangers side. But to know that we went so close, so close to knocking them out and winning the tournament. But a runners-up is still fantastic, is it not? It's way more than I expected. Beljo getting 22 goals in the Champions League. How we've managed to hold on to him, I don't know. His transfer value is still at 43 million if any of these big clubs want to come in for him and it can't be long until they do because he scored 57 in 34 in the league with an 8.28 average match rating. 94 goals in all competitions as well. I've never seen anything like that from a striker who's only 25 as well. Loads of years to get better. There's no way we'd hang on to him if we did another season here. Beljo is phenomenal and he's managed to drag us to a Champions League final. But let's see how we actually got on across the course of the Champions League. So we originally we lost to Porto in the league phase. We then beat, uh, where are they? Hadrick split, okay. Then we beat Dortmund. We beat PSG 2-1, fair play to us. So this wasn't on luck. It looks like we've beat a lot of teams that many would consider us to lose to. The first one, uh, Marseille, we beat 2-1 as well. We beat Gladbach 1-0. Most of the time just scraping over the line, but still very good. We then drew 4-4 to Barcelona and Beljo is dragging us forward. Then again, Leicester, we beat 2-1, beating a Premier League side. Round of 16, we have Liverpool. I wouldn't have thought we'd get past them, but Beljo and Max Ahrens drag us over the line and get us into the quarters against PSG. Sorry, if we beat PSG 5-0, we lose 2-1 with Mbappe and Salah scoring and then win the home leg at the Ibrox 5-0. That must be one of the best nights in Ibrox history, watching your team beat PSG 5-0. Christian Webster, no idea who this guy is or how he's got on the pitch. A backup right back, it seems, has gone on and scored a goal against PSG. But that's awesome. So then we make our way into, what was that? That was the quarterfinals. So then it's a semi against Bayern. We did not do this the easy way, did we? Thomas Muller, still playing somehow, scores one in the first leg. We draw one all. And then we run 3-2 with Ryan Kent, of all people, getting the winner in extra time. And Beljo scoring in the 94th minute to keep us going. Ryan Kent may be the unsung hero of this rebuild so far because he's always contributed with some great numbers. So thank you, Ryan Kent. Um, but that's that's amazing. And then, I mean, 11-0 against Partick Thistle. What a game that would have been as well. Um, but then we get all the way after winning the Scottish Cup final 
to play Arsenal in the Champions League final where Odegaard has put us to the sword. Let's take a look at the team that we lined up with. Hoyen Hall in goal, Aarons, Boyomo, Badashile, Yilmaz, Diaz, Hagen, Johansson, Bacharina, Kent and Beljo. With Leon King getting on, Ionis Haji, Zach Lovelace and Ismaili Saar. A few of these, by the way, have been around right from the start. Leon King was one of those young players that we looked at and he's played here or there for us. I say here or there, he's played a lot this season. 34 appearances. I think he's now our fourth choice centre-back. So I guess in all competitions, he would play a fair bit unless someone's been injured and maybe he's played more. But either way, this rebuild has gone way better than I would have thought. In terms of potential, there's a lot of players up there. Clearly our goalkeeper is the one with all the potential and the ability is now nicely spread throughout the squad, but very, very happy with this. This has been one of the most fun rebuilds to do. Never done one in Scotland before and maybe we'll do a Celtic one next. But there we go, guys. That is our Rangers rebuild. Let me know what you think. If you did enjoy it, smash the like button for me. Comment who you'd like to see next. Subscribe for more and I'll see you next time. So have a great day. Thank you and goodbye.